Hey, what's going on? Justin here for MTB. We're going to talk about something pretty awesome today. And summertime is a great time to fish frogs. When you have lakes that the vegetation's just growing wild, it's hard to get other lures back in the cover. The frog can be fished a variety of different ways, but where it excels is in that thick vegetation. So we're gonna look at a few different frogs today, test them out, and just really get in here in some cover. I'm honestly excited to get to fishing these frogs, and there's one rat in the box here in this cover. What we've got here is we've got very heavy vegetation and we've got filamentous algae that's grown up to the top and kind of created that, that scum, that little yellow scum at the top that's really popular on some of the um, Tennessee River Valley lakes. If you look at like um, Gunnersville and lakes over in the south, Florida, Alabama, uh, and many other lakes have this, this type of vegetation. Uh, we got reeds in the back, we've got hydrilla out in front, there's just a number of things going on up here, multiple different types of vegetation. It'd be extremely hard to get a Texas rig, spinnerbait, you name it, through this stuff. But the one thing we can fish through here is a frog. One of the first frogs we're going to look at is the Lucky John frog. This is, uh, I've, right off the bat, I've noticed a super soft frog. Uh, so it's going to have a real good uh, buoyancy, it doesn't have much weight in it at all. Uh, there's zero rattles in it. Um, it's got a little uh, bit of weight at the end, looks like just like a plastic cap, um, but super soft. So, you know, the thing about soft frogs is if you're fishing a really, really soft one, great for hookups. That's one of the biggest problems with catching bass on a frog. It's almost like you catch one out of every three on average. But with a really soft frog like this, you'll get better hookups. The only disadvantage is if you're fishing it over a mat that's got heavy vegetation, uh, or if you're fishing it around reeds, which is where I have the most problem with soft frogs, is it'll snag up on those little things that are hanging out. Whereas a little bit stiffer plastic frog will come through there, but you get less hookups. So it's kind of that give and take. So this Lucky John frog would be great for uh, light grass, and basically just fishing it right over the top of uh, like this grass I have right here instead of really pitching it back uh, under docks and under reeds and trees and things like that that it might get hung up on. So after getting a couple bites it's kind of becoming clear to me that I need to fish around these these reeds. I've seen a few bass come up on the outside edges but they are I, I can hear them literally like they're way back in there there's one way back in there oh yeah that was actually kind of a light bite the way you hit it sucked it down totally though it's just gone now this is the river to sea bully wall pretty small profile frog this is actually kind of a translucent red color one of the things I like about this frog the hooks just lay flush right on top. It's a little stiffer. They put a uh, hand tie on the uh, split ring up front, so it'll stay stay up there. Unlike that Lucky John frog that kind of came down a little bit, this uh, this frog's got a little little hand tie that'll that'll keep it together a little bit more. One of the other really good things about it is it's got a keel on the bottom, so if you wanted to walk it a little bit side to side. You could do that. Now there might be those of you that are unfamiliar with frog fishing that might be asking, it's summertime, I thought you had to go deep to, to catch fish. And that, that is true, but there's really three things that bass look for in the summertime that they stay around. They look for deep water because it's cooler, it usually has more oxygen. They look for current because that's going to re-oxygenate the water as well. Or shade. And the shade is provided by this grass and heavy cover, but what it also does is, is it puts out oxygen in the water. So the fish can get really shallow, even in the hottest times of summer, just because of that grass is helping to reoxygenate the water and provide shade. And it also provides 
cover for bait fish. So bait fish can really hide in there. Um, it's, a, it's a jungle in there for bass to go in there and go after bait fish, but they know that they're going to get their opportunity eventually. Let's look at this Kahara skirted rat and rat right here. Now this is a Japanese style rat. I've actually never fished a, a rat like this, so this is cool. It's got a uh, really, it's got two really long tails, thinner, almost kind of resembling a, a, a rat tail, thinner body. This is going to be better walking, I'd assume. Um, it's got a little weight on the end, got a nice bright belly to it. I think this is going to be better suited for throwing into these reeds just because it's, it's a little harder body and it's thinner so it's going to come through there a little better so this might be a good good alternative to fishing a regular frog up in the heavy vegetation. Now the rat's definitely got a more side to side sharp action to it which is cool. You got to give really light twitches. It's almost like a small uh, Sammy style bait. Oh my gosh, they're back there. Oh, I can see a fish back in here. One of the last hollow bodies we have to look at is the Copper's Live Target Frog. There's really not a whole lot to say about it except it's just a great frog. I would put it in my top top three frogs to fish just for a number of reasons it's got it's got a great look to it it's one of the more 3d frogs more realistic looking frogs although it looks good it still has really good functionality the, the arms on it actually make it uh, keel in the water which is really helpful and it, it floats really good you know it's just ready to fish right out of the package really good hooks I like the way the hooks sit on the body. It doesn't get hung up too much. And uh, it's, it's been a winner for me. Um, and other, I've done other videos with this frog, both on my channel and with MTB, that are just catching some good fish. So it just works. It's one of those frogs where you just bring it out of the package and it works. And it looks good. There's not a whole lot to say about it, except it's good. If you've tried fishing out deep, you're not getting bites, go ahead and tie on a frog. Get up there in the shallows and pop that thing around. There is nothing like hearing a bass explode on a hollow body in the middle of the day when it's nice and calm or in the evening when it's calm, just that whoosh, unforgettable sound. Hey, do you like mysteries? Do you like boxes? Do you like tackle? Well, you come to the right spot. Hope you learned something on this tip and trick video, and if you'd like to see more, you can go ahead and subscribe right here to the Mystery Tackle Box YouTube channel. And if you want to, you can get boxes sent to you every month for as low as $15 a month. Go ahead and hit us on the like situation down there as well.